When Santa falls from your roof and dies, there is no other choice but to take up his place and fulfill his duties. And that's why today in Flick Summary, the Santa Claus. Meet Scott Calvin, a new divorcee dad who is trying his hardest to make his rather skeptical kid like him. Scott works in a toy company that is constantly thriving and growing, but even with his powerful toy making job, Charlie, his son, can't manage to find anything in common with his dad. Well, I guess, ouch for Scott. On Christmas Eve, Laura, his ex-wife and her husband, Neil, head over to Scott's place to drop Charlie off for the holidays. However, the kid isn't particularly thrilled about spending Christmas with his father and would much rather spend it with his mom and stepdad. Sorry, I mean, you are horrible, but I shouldn't have said it so loud. Once again, ouch. Anyway, Laura then tells Scott that she has been slowly but surely telling Charlie that Santa isn't real, which Scott immediately gets upset about, as he should. Apparently, Neil thinks that if they don't let Charlie get his hopes up about Santa, he will avoid a harsher disappointment later on in life. Laura eventually leaves and Scott is left alone with his kid as he attempts to make the best Christmas for Charlie. Never gonna happen. All the while, Scott is convinced that he should keep the hope alive for the sake of his son as he attempts to convince Charlie that Santa is in fact real, which he doesn't really buy, asking Scott all sorts of questions to prove his lack of existence. I thought people don't have fireplaces. How does he get into their house? But if Santa's so fat, how does he get down the chimneys? But you do believe in Santa, right, Dad? Luckily for Scott, his sheer determination to convince Charlie to believe in the magic of Santa and Christmas caused his son to ask him to take out the cookies and milk for Saint Nick, just in case. Yeah, right, just in case. He knows as well as we do, he doesn't want the magic to end just yet. I know more than you. Later, Scott reads Charlie a Christmassy bedtime story and he is out like a lamp. While the two sleep peacefully throughout the night, Charlie is suddenly awoken by strange sound and loud noises. LOUD NOISES! Excited about the possibility that it could be Santa himself, Charlie wastes no time in waking up his father, who at first is too sleepy to care. But as soon as he heard the noises coming from the house, he is immediately alert. This time around, the roles are completely reversed, with Charlie being completely blind to excitement and Scott, well, he is worried about a break in by now. Can I call 911? Sure, 911. When they head out to investigate, Charlie and Scott run into a bit of a surprise. Santa is apparently dead. No, you can count me out. Yeah, pretty dark. Thankfully for the pair, he left a note with instructions, asking whoever found him to put on the red suit and the reindeers will handle the rest. Sounds pretty straightforward. Scott isn't having any of it though and is severely concerned about the dead body that is casually resting outside his house. Fair enough. That is, of course, until it mysteriously disappears. Charlie begs him to climb up the roof and do as Santa says. As soon as they reach the roof, they encounter the reindeer that seems to be expecting Scott to know exactly what to do. Charlie practically forces Scott into wearing the suit and almost immediately, the sleigh gets flying. It's okay, I'm used to it. I lived through the 60s. Whoa, weed jokes in a Christmas movie. Who would have thought? The sleigh leads Scott and Charlie into a home and true to Santa's mythology, Scott goes down the chimney and drops off some presents over at a little girl's home. Unfortunately, the alarm system activates and he gets out of the house before you can even blink, avoiding getting caught by the kid's parents and possibly getting a beating. Oh, thank God. The reindeer then pick up where Santa left off and continue their present delivery all throughout the world. And although Scott is very much freaked out, Charlie's excitement is undeniably infectious and he eventually warms up to the idea of being Santa replacement for a night. As soon as they finish, Scott instructs the reindeer to take them home, but given that their home is in the North Pole, they misinterpret the instructions. Whoops. Again, Scott is freaked out, while Charlie is absolutely marveled over Santa's workshop and, of course, the elves. There he meets the boss elf, Bernard, who is a little strict and cold towards everyone, but with good intentions at heart. Scott tells him about Santa's passing, which doesn't really surprise Bernard at all. Of course, Charlie asks Bernard all sorts of questions and the boss elf decides to give a gift. A North Pole snow globe, as he tells him to keep it safe. Why don't you uh, hold on to it for me for a while? It might come in handy. 
Sounds like the master sword or something. <laughs> Pretty neat. Anyway, obviously Scott is as confused as ever and only wants to return home as soon as possible and assign the role of Santa to anyone else who'll take it. However, Bernard tells him that there's nothing he can do about it if he already put on the suit. Apparently, the note that instructed him about the suit and the reindeer had some microscopic print that clearly stated that if the suit is worn, the person that wears it instantly agrees to be Santa Claus. No questions asked. And as you may have guessed, that would be the aptly titled Santa Claus. Oh, you mean the guy that fell off my roof? No, 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 not Santa Claus the person, Santa Claus the Claus. What? Sounds like Santa was a little bit of a sneaky little fella, huh? The following morning, Scott and Charlie wake up at their home as if nothing ever happened. But they're both fully aware of the truth. On one hand, Scott is convinced that it was all a dream and nothing more. On the other, he is confused as to why it felt so real and why Charlie would know about it in the first place. Brilliant. <laughs> I have absolutely no idea what's going on. Charlie doesn't mind much. His dad is Santa now and nothing can be cooler than that. Laura and Neil arrive at Scott's place to pick her son up, but are surprised when they find that the skeptical kid that wasn't Scott's biggest fan is no longer there and is a child full of hope and illusions of magic and Christmas time. That's the new Santa. The regular Santa fell off the roof and dad put on the suit. For some reason, Laura and Neil aren't too thrilled about it. Uh, but who cares about what they think? Sometime later, at school, Charlie has to introduce his parents to his schoolmates and tell his peers about his parents' careers. At first, he was going to introduce Neil, who is a psychiatrist, but given his newfound love for Scott, he decides to go for his actual dad instead. Scott excitedly introduces himself as a toy maker, explaining that he works for a toy company, which is actually true, but Charlie interrupts, stating that his dad is actually Santa, and he even has elves working for him. And we don't say elves, they're little people. Scott then goes on to say that he is actually not Santa Claus and attempts to convince Charlie of the same. But what can you do? The kid knows what he saw. Seeing this unusual behavior from the kid, the school sets up a meeting with Laura, Neil and Scott. How fun! Whoop -de -doo. The teacher asks Scott to tell him that he's actually not Santa Claus, as it could be potentially harmful for his feelings later on when he is old enough to find out the truth. Ma'am, what truth? His father is Santa! But um, I guess I understand her skepticism. Back at home, Laura and Neil once again do their best efforts to convince Charlie that Scott isn't actually Santa, but he refuses with a rather strong comeback. You ever seen a million dollars? No. Just because you haven't seen it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. <laughs> I gotta say, that would immediately shut me up. Later, Scott picks up Charlie at Laura's place and they go on a walk, where they decide to keep the whole Santa North Pole thing a secret, just between the two of them, finally coming to terms with his now new identity, Santa Claus. A few months later, Charlie's obsession with Santa and the North Pole remains untouched and Scott suddenly grew a beard and earned over 50 pounds in no time. How fun! His personality slowly but surely starts mixing along with Santa's as he starts eating on basically every cookie he sees and affects his work as a toy maker. Not in a good way. You see, Santa would want innocent presents that would do no harm for little kids to enjoy. A toy company… well, a toy company wants to sell toys, what can I tell you? Given that he hasn't exactly been the employee of the month, his boss decides to have a little talk with him in hopes to turn the sudden shift in Scott's persona as he tells him that he has changed and is very obviously not himself. You're starting to look like the Pillsbury Doughboy. You're, you're falling apart. Well, he didn't have to be so rude. Due to his sudden weight gain, white hair and ever-growing beard, Scott heads to the doctor to check if everything's okay. You know, health-wise. The doctor doesn't seem concerned about anything going on and tells him that it could just be a little hormone imbalance thing he has going on, but obviously Scott knows exactly what it's about. I know more than you. To make matters worse, at one of Charlie's soccer practices, his peers become aware that Scott is alarmingly similar to Santa Claus himself and decide to sit on his lap and ask for presents, which really doesn't look good at all. Uh, it's not good. It, 
It doesn't look good. Laura and Neil arrive at the practice as well and are shocked over Scott's sudden change of looks, scolding him for letting Charlie continue to think that he is Santa Claus as she walks away. Once home, Laura has a talk with Neil where she decides she will do her best to take Scott's visitation rights due to him not being the father she wants him to be for his son. Which, I mean, fair enough, you know, sounds a little drastic though. As time goes by, it becomes practically impossible to hide his identity any longer, as God immediately grows a beard any time he shaves. Yeah, it really looks like you are, Scott. Or Santa, I don't know what to call him anymore. Anyway, Neil and Laura get together with a lawyer in order to try to remove the visitation rights from Scott, a parent who believes he is Santa. Just before the court makes the decision, Laura expresses that she is having second thought about her decision, especially since she was heartbroken the moment she stopped believing in Santa, when he didn't bring her the one thing she wanted. She doesn't get to think it over too much though as not too long after the judge has the results. Um, Unfortunately, given the bizarre nature of the case, Laura and Neil get full custody while Scott can only get supervised visitation. Gosh, damn it. One would think Santa Claus would get the kids, but I guess not. Life is pointless and nothing matters and I'm always tired. Charlie is completely devastated and demands for his dad to visit him right away, which Santa, uh, I mean Scott, immediately does. Back at Laura and Neil's, we find out that Christmas Eve is the very same day and he wishes to be with his dad. Especially since they had a blast the previous year. He decides to go against court orders and as soon as Laura turns away, he takes Charlie away on his sleigh to give him the Christmas he really wants. I guess you could say that's kidnapping, but who am I to judge, right? The police are immediately on the case and on the lookout for anyone that may be dressed as Santa Claus. All the while Scott is delivering presents to little kids while Charlie is having the time of his life. Soon enough Santa gets apprehended and taken into custody for kidnapping, but of course some badass elves and Bernard himself come to the rescue, helping Scott break out the prison. The miracle of Christmas, right? Scott decides to prove himself to Laura and Neil and arrives in all his Christmassy glory to hopefully turn their minds around about his new identity. And one look in his eyes is enough to convince them. It's you. It really is you. <laughs> you really are Santa Claus. Yes, even Neil. Scott. Neil? Santa? The family then decides to burn the custody papers and give Scott the second chance he deserves. He then goes on to fulfill his duty as the new Santa Claus along with Charlie who makes the experience all the more better. And that's all for today. Make sure to stay tuned as we'll be doing the Santa Claus 2 very soon. For now let us know in the comments what you thought of this movie and as always don't forget to subscribe, like this video and share it with your friends. See you next time!